Hello everyone, welcome to All Must See. Today, I'll describe Fifty Shades of Grey, a 2015 romance drama film, turn on subtitles, spoilers ahead. Anastasia Steele studies English literature at Washington. Her flatmate, Kate Cavanaugh, is scheduled to interview a 25-year-old billionaire called Christian Grey, but she takes ill on the day and insists that Anna take her place. Kate asks Anna to ensure that she has everything she needs for the interview. After ensuring her flatmate that she is prepared, she interviews Christian Grey. After arriving at the massive structure, the receptionist leads her inside, but as soon as she enters Christian's office, she trips. Christian swiftly asks whether she's okay, addressing her as Kate. Anna says she is all right, introduces herself as Anna, and says she will interview him instead of Kate. Christian informs her that she has 10 minutes for the interview and urges her to begin asking questions. She asks him how he becomes so successful at such a young age and to whom he owed his success. Christian claims that his business is all about people and he has always been friendly with them. His ability to recognize and highlight an individual's skill is critical to his success. After a few more questions about his interests and relationship, Christian asks if she has anything she wants to ask him. She claims that he claimed that several people knew him well but she believes this is not true. Before he could respond, his secretary arrived to summon him to the meeting, which Christian declined to attend. He then tells Anna that he wants to know more about her. She tells him she is an English literature student who intends to go to Seattle with Kate after graduation. He offers her an internship in his office, but she argues she won't fit in. She soon leaves and Christian asks if she received everything she needed, to which Anna responds that he only answered four questions. Just before entering the lift, Christian takes the question paper from her file. He says, Anastasia, and she responds, Christian. When Anna arrives home, Kate tells her she's perfect because Christian just emailed her and addressed everything. Kate wonders how Christian was, and Anna responds that he was courteous yet frightening. Kate looks at his images online and concludes that he has no pictures with girls and may be gay, but Anna swiftly responds that it is possible that he prefers privacy. Kate teases her about defending him before walking away. At school, Anna is contacted by her friend Jose, a photography major, who informs her that his photographs will be shown in an exhibition. Anna congratulates him, but it is clear that Jose has affections for Anna. Anna receives a call from her mother the next day, as she heads to work at the store. She informs Anna that her husband, Bob, has fractured his foot and will be unable to attend her graduation. After her mother hangs up, Anna rushes to assist a co-worker and is surprised to see Christian standing nearby. He claims he's here to pick up something and asks if she can assist him. Anna shows him around the business and informs him that Kate is pleased with the interview, but she was unable to obtain a nice photo of him. Christian says that if she wants the one, he is available tomorrow and gives Anna his card, requesting that she phone him for the photo shoot. The next day, while doing Christian's picture shoot, Kate informs Anna that he hasn't stopped looking at her since he arrived, and Anna tells her that he has invited her to go for coffee after the shoot. When they go for coffee, Christian asks if the photographer is Anna's boyfriend, but she answers no. At the coffee shop, she admits that she finds him intimidating and arrogant, but Christian believes it's a good thing because he's used to getting his way. He then asks Anna about her family, to which she replies that her father died when she was six years old and that her stepfather raises her while her mother lives with her fourth husband. She claims that her mother is quite romantic, and she is taken after her. After listening to this Christian, he abruptly rises up and tells them to go. Outside, he tells Anna that he isn't the right man for her and that she should avoid him. He says he needs to leave her and walks away. Anna and Kate intend to visit a club after finishing their final paper. As they prepare, Anna receives a Christian gift that includes first editions of several of her favorite books. She decides she cannot take it and gives it back to the Christian. After that, they head to the club, where Anna becomes inebriated and phones Christian. She expresses gratitude for his generous gesture, but wishes to return the book. Christian realizes she is inebriated and urges her to return home, but she instead questions why he believes he can control everything, and he stops the call. Christian phones her again, says he'll pick her up, and then hangs up. Anna goes out, where her buddy Jose proclaims his love and prepares to kiss her without her consent but Christian intervenes and pushes Jose away. Anna passes out unexpectedly, so Christian takes her back to his hotel while leaving Kate with his brother Elliot. When Anna awakens, she is in Christian's hotel room, relieved to discover that they did not sleep together. Christian claims he won't do anything while she is sleeping and informs her that his driver, Taylor, went to get some clothes for her. She asks him why she's here and why he sent her those books. Christian admits he can't leave alone, and that he sent her the books as an apology. He claims that he does not like romance and that his taste is very specific, which she will not understand, but Anna suggests that he enlighten her, and she leans in for a kiss, 
but Christian turns away. He inquires about her schedule and informs her that Taylor will pick her up when she is free. He tells her that he will not touch her until he has her written authorization and would inform her later, but as they approach the lift, he loses control and kisses Anna. He takes her home, where they see Elliot and Kate having an intimate moment. When she gets off work at night, Taylor is already waiting for her and takes her to Christian, who is waiting for her in front of a chopper. She is ecstatic when she learns that they are traveling to Seattle. After they arrive, Christian hands her a non-disclosure agreement, stating that she cannot tell anyone about what happened between them. Anna instantly signs it, claiming she will not tell anyone about it. He then takes her upstairs and tells her that it is his playroom, and she should know that she may leave at any time since a helicopter is waiting to take her back if she changes her mind. She is perplexed, but urges him to open the door. There are many weird objects in the room, and Christian tells Anna about them. She wonders if he's a sadist, but Christian says he's dominating, which means he wants her to gladly succumb to him. He informs her that he has some rules, and if she follows them, she will receive a prize if she does not she will face punishment. He then brings her to a room and offers her the room if she agrees. She asks if he wants her to live with him, but he replies she'll be here from Friday till Sunday. He says he'll live below, and she needs to understand that he doesn't do relationship. Christian then informs her that these terms are negotiable, and that he has drafted a fair and clear contract. He informs her that she will go over the contract and tell him what she is willing to do and what they must take out of it. After he informs her about it, they have their first sexual encounter. The next morning, Anna meets Christian's mother, who arrived unexpectedly. She liked Anna after meeting her and invited them both to the family dinner she was planning in a few days. After Christian's mother leaves, Anna wonders if they would ever do the things that normal couples do, but Christian tells her to maintain an open mind and promises that if she is his submissive, he will be loyal to her. Later, when Christian arrives to drop her off, he suggests they go for a walk. He informs her that Mrs. Robinson, his mother's acquaintance, introduced him to this lifestyle and that he was her submissive for six years. When Anna asked Christian what he loved about it, he stated he felt free and safe after relinquishing control. He then hands her the contract, asks her to read it carefully, and asks if she is confused. When Anna returns home, she discovers that Christian has sent her a laptop to keep them in touch and allow her to explore the matter. They meet again after a few days in his office, since Anna insists on treating it as an official encounter. She tells him about several of her dislikes, as well as her soft and hard limitations. Christian says he is impressed by her dedication to the meeting. After that, Christian says he'd want to meet her maybe next week. Later, during Anna's graduation, Christian appears as a special visitor and identifies himself as Anna's friend to her stepfather. Christian presents her an automobile as a graduation present, claiming he convinced Taylor to sell her old car. Even after Anna and Kate relocate to Seattle, they continue to see each other. After a few days, they visit Christian's parents' place for dinner. When they're eating, Anna reveals that she'll be visiting her mother in Georgia the next day. Christian is unaware of this and becomes angry. He pulls Anna out and asks why she didn't tell him about any. Anna expresses her confusion about him and dislikes their one-sided relationship. Christian tells Anna that his birth mother was a drug addict who died when he was four years old. He barely recalls her, although he claims to have occasional dreams about her. Later, when Jessica visits Georgia to meet her mother, Carla, Christian unexpectedly appears and introduces himself to Carla. He then takes her air gliding, but stops midway to return to Seattle for an emergency meeting. When Anna returns from Georgia, she continues to meet Christian, who wants to continue their sexual experimentation. She agrees with him, but he remains emotionally distant throughout this time, which bothers her. While reviewing the contract and attempting to understand Christian's psyche, she asks him to show how he would punish her if she violated a rule. He lashes her back with a belt, and has her count each hit aloud. Anna is disgusted by all of this and retreats to her bedroom to cry. She tells him she fell in love with him but realizes she can't be the person he wants to be. Anna departs from Christian and makes her way to the lift. Christian follows her and tries to persuade her not to leave, but she is already determined. As she enters the lift, he calls her Anna, but she merely says Christian as the doors close. Thank you for being a part of our journey. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. Your support means the world to us. Stay inspired and spread positivity. See you soon.